We have a former title challenger, and I'm not lying. We have Tim Elliott taking on Jordan Espinosa in a flyweight showcase here. Matt, flyweight never die. A couple of guys that have kind of been there and done that. And for Jordan Espinosa, it's kind of long in the tooth now. He's been with the UFC, it seems, for a little while. He came in on Contender Series back a time ago. And while his record in the UFC isn't in the positive, well, neither is Tim Elliott. He's 5-9 and nine in the UFC. <laughs> but he's taken on some of the best competition that's been thrown at him. For Jordan Espinosa so far, if you look at the wins, we're talking Eric Shelton in his debut. We're talking Mark De La Rosa, the losses to Max Schnell, Alex Perez, and David Dvorak in his last fight. And the reason why David Dvorak won that fight, not because I love him, it's because of the leg kicks. It, it was, was the leg kicks. The leg kicks really troubled Jordan Espinosa. And if I could show you, Espinosa is the type of guy that had a really long uh, wrestling career. He's known for his wrestling. But he hasn't really shot for a lot of takedowns in the UFC. He doesn't really have the highest uh, percentage of takedowns uh, attempted and actually made successful. His takedown defense is great. But Jordan Espinosa kind of fancies himself a guy with a very long stance. And he's it's forward and back. It's kind of almost like a karate stance. And he throws a powerful right hand. But really, it hasn't landed all that well. He's taking on a guy. And I know for Tim Elliott, his handle on the internet's at Awkward MMA. But if I could throw this to a guy that he used to play baseball with every summer growing up, he's a sketch bag. He's a straight-up sketch bag. I mean, you watch Tim Elliott fight, and it's like if Dominic Cruz decided that he was going to take the Keith Peterson diet before a fight and just smoke and booze a bunch. That's how Tim Elliott fights. He's kind of wonky. But wait, he's... isn't it fun to watch, though? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> okay, well, we're taking okay. different tangents. For, for Tim Elliott, if you want to see a fun fight, it's the time that he fought Askar Askarov and did the drunk man, oh. like, woo, and then he ended up on his back. But really, Tim Elliott does a lot of weird things. His grappling's all right. His jiu-jitsu's all right. His wrestling's pretty good. His striking's super unorthodox. And he throws a lot of kicks straight up the middle to keep you away from him. So he can kind of do... Well, again, Dominic Cruz does a figure eight. Tim Elliott does, I don't know, like a 69. Like, he just does the weirdest stuff. So for me, Tim Elliott's a tough nut to crack. Can Jordan Espinosa do it? Possibly. That's what makes this fight so fun. Because Jordan Espinosa, a lot more technical. Like, he's a lot more of a cerebral fighter. Craig, you're more technical than Tim Elliott. That's Tim, the great thing about Tim Elliott, though. Tim Elliott's, like, if he took Kevin Kroom's game plan and you mix that with, like, a cat, that's kind of Tim Elliott. Okay, there's a lot to absorb there. So I'm going to go through the jokes first. The first one is good. The 69, one, not great. You've done better. That's all I'll say. Tim Elliott is a fun fighter to watch. And yes, he does have that weird Jar Jar Binks drunken style, but it's a fun style to watch. He is going to go out there. And the great thing about Tim Elliott is I love it when Tim Elliott fights a prospect. He's the perfect guy to match up with a prospect because you can't just hit him with one shot and he's going to fall down. He's a very durable fighter. You can submit him on the map, but he's so good at scrambling that you're not just going to go and grab that submission. I understand. Go back to the bench. Ben Yen fight or Ben Wen fight. He was able to get submitted very early in that fight. Same thing with Devison Figueredo. But the people who can really submit Tim Elliott are the guys who can counter his wrestling with their own jiu-jitsu. Devison Figueredo could submit anyone in the UFC with a guillotine. He has one of the best guillotines arguably ever. Let's talk about the losses. Demetrius Johnson, Figueredo, Askarov, Royval, and Joseph Benavidez are just some of the losses. They're all amazing. Like, those are some of the best fighters ever. And go back to the Demetrius fight. Tim Elliott was doing great. It was weird. And then he had no business doing great in that fight. But look at that first round. And I'm not a big Ultimate Fighter fan, but I do remember I got excited. That was one of those like weird midweek cards. And I was like, okay, Tim Elliott fight DJ. Let's see what he does. And I was super impressed with Tim Elliott. It was a weird performance because you could tell Demetrius, is he better than Tim Elliott at everything? Well, of course he is. But the unorthodox style of Tim Elliott was giving DJ problems. And I always say it's the LeBron 2011 effect, but when you are so good and you're used to seeing everything a certain way in every single fight, when people throw you just a wonky look, sometimes, no matter how good you are as an athlete, it's going to take you a little while to adjust. And we saw that for Demetrius Johnson. With Jordan Espinosa, though, the film's been out there on Tim Elliott. This is the thing. The Demetrius Johnson fight was a long time ago, and I understand that was his second, well, his introduction back into the UFC after his first run, if you will. But Jordan Espinosa has been able to watch a lot of film on Tim Elliott by this time, and I do think that, not that the game plan's out there, but you know what you're going to get from Tim Elliott. There is a certain unorthodoxness to his style, but at this point, he just does the same thing every fight. Yeah, it's weird, but the weirdness has been the same it's always been, and I do think fighters are starting to get a sense of his timing, where... He's waiting a lot for his opponents to make a move, and then he tries to shoot a takedown. That's Tim Elliott's game. The issue is, I don't think he's fast enough on the feet anymore at 34 years of age to really be able to evade a lot of the strikes. And the Askar Askarov fight is a perfect example, because if you think, okay, 
How's Askarov going to beat Tim Elliott? Well, both guys are great at scrambling, but you would think that if they get into a scramble, Askarov's going to end up on top, and it'll go to work from there. Askarov, Askarov outstruck Tim Elliott and outwrestled him, and a lot of that was because Askarov could fake his own takedown and land a straight shot down the middle. And Tim Elliott, you can tell, he would have been happy if Askarov shot the takedown because then he could initiate some of the scrambles. But when he did start with the striking, it would just kind of catch Tim Elliott off guard. He can get cracked clean. It's not that Espinosa is going to throw a lot of different strikes at him, but you mentioned it. The strikes that he does throw are quite hard, and we've seen Tim Elliott get cracked. And I don't want to say Tim Elliott has a bad chin, but I do think he's one of these fighters where at the age of 34, you're fighting at flyweight. <laughs> Things aren't trending in the right direction for Tim Elliott, and I do think Jordan Espinosa is the type of opponent who can take advantage of Tim Elliott at this stage in his career. Tim Elliott's last time out, he fought Ryan Benoit. And what's the story on Ryan Benoit? He's a good striker, and he's gone through a ton of injuries. And in that fight, Elliott won it. So if you look at the bookend and the last five on in, which is a new uh, term with Fight Night Picks, you're going to see it on that last graphic. So the five on in... For Tim Elliott, well, he's 2-3. and three. And you look at the win. So he beat Mark De La Rosa and submitted him. That's a decent win. Then he loses to Figueredo. Then he loses to Askarov. Then he loses to Royville. Okay, that's pretty tough. And then he fights Ryan Benoit. If you go back and watch that fight, Ryan Benoit probably won. I MMA decisions, too. 12 voters had it for uh, Benoit to 6 that had it for Elliott. Elliott ends up walking out of there as a winner. Like I said, for Espinosa, great wrestler. He was a high school state champ in New Mexico. He had the opportunity to wrestle in college. Again, the leg kicks are a problem. He throws a lot of them himself. But if you watch the Dvorak fight, every time you land right there, you're going to land on that leg and it gets kicked. And by the end of it, yeah, Espinosa, you could hear him in his corner. Like, I, I'm having a hard time walking here. I don't even, like, he didn't even know what to do. And he couldn't switch stances. It wasn't working for him. He can almost exclusively work out of orthodox. And southpaw, no way, Jose. So, if Tim Elliott can work a heavy leg kick game, maybe it works out for him in the end. Let's have a look quick at the topology votes, Matt. Holy smokes. There's 1,300 of them on the nose right now. 81% have Elliott. 60% by decision. 33% by submission. If we look at the odds, Tim Elliott open a minus 130 favorite. He's now at a plus 103. And if you look at Espinosa, open plus 110. He's now at a minus 127. So the money came in on Espinosa. The fans have Tim Elliott. Always interesting to see the difference in them. It's a tricky one. Again, if you look at Espinosa, good footwork, wide stance, right overhand, and a double leg takedown, and that's that's the Espinosa game plan. Tim Elliott, you could juggle what he's going to do. Who knows? No, I couldn't agree more. Here's the thing. Tim Elliott's really hard to pick for or against at this point in his career just because he is so unique and he is so awkward not to bring his own nickname up, but... You don't really know what you're going to get in between every single fight. I like Jordan Espinosa in this fight because here's the thing. He might not check leg kicks. He does throw them, though. Tim Elliott doesn't even throw that many leg kicks, but he is susceptible to them. And we do see this with some fighters. We do talk a lot about how fighters eat calf kicks now. There's a lot of fighters who offensively can throw it really well, but they don't know how to defend it. Dustin Poirier is another guy. Like, you see him. He doesn't check leg kicks all that well, but he's super good at throwing them. Tim Elliott doesn't even throw them. He's just bad at checking them, and he is more boxing heavy. And the thing with Tim Elliott... I don't even think Tim Elliott can hurt Jordan Espinosa on the feet. It's just the style that Tim Elliott has the striking. He's the most male comparison to Roxanne Modafferi. And I know that's a weird comparison to make, but just hear me out. Tim Elliott, all he does is throw volume until he can get you down. And then his ground game, it is so unique. That's where he has his success. Roxanne does the exact same thing. So I think Espinosa, if he can cut through a lot of the BS, for lack of a better term, that Tim Elliott throws at him, if he does just stay dedicated to his output, if he can make this an ugly fight without really getting involved in a lot of those scrambles, because here's the thing, if you scramble with Tim Elliott, you're either going to submit him or he's going to end up on top and make your life a nightmare. It's really one or the other. I like Espinosa because I just feel like at this stage in his career, he's the safer pick, but I got to be honest, you can pick either one of these guys. I'm going to grab a thing of popcorn and a pop and just enjoy this one. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's a pop and popcorn fight for me, 100%. I mean, you look at Jordan Espinosa's first win in the UFC. See you later, Eric Shelton. Well, what's Eric Shelton? A really good wrestler for this division. And Jordan Espinosa was able to get the win there. Tim Elliott, defensively, maybe not the best wrestler. Offensively, very good because he's always working for takedowns. But that's the thing. You don't have to be a good defensive wrestler if you're a really good submission artist. And he goes for tons of submissions. Espinosa doesn't. So... If Espinosa is going for position, it's going to be tough with Tim Elliott. And listen, if you look at the numbers so far, you have a bigger sample size for Elliott than you do for Espinosa. More volume, though, for Espinosa. Um, better percentages for Espinosa. I think Tim Elliott's a weird matchup for him, and that's the thing. I think if Elliott's able to just kind of circle away and throw a lot of volume, he's going to cause Jordan Espinosa a lot of problems. So, again... Don't have a ton of confidence in it. I like Tim Elliott in this fight for the weirdness factor. Yeah. I, I like him as odd as he is. And maybe he does invest and see, hey, 
Well, David Dvorak did that, and that's the thing. With the Glory MMA, you either get the cream of the crop, or you get whatever's left at the end of the cream. You get the gross cream. And that's the thing. I mean, we saw Kevin Kroom come out last week. He talked game planning. The guy went in there and just had a bad one. I mean, he went fishing in a puddle. You knew he wasn't going to get anything, but he just kept casting away. So for me, I'm going to go with Tim Elliott. He's predictably unpredictable. You're going with Jordan Espinosa. It's an interesting fight, to say the least. Flyweight never die. Three title fights at the top, Matt. We're really looking forward to this card. Let's keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. As we always say, let's, let's get, get into it.